Earth is a truly blue planet. Yet we know more about the surface of the Moon than we do of the deep sea. Deeper than light can penetrate in extreme cold and total darkness. There's an abundance of life in the deep sea, most of which we're yet to discover. Far from being a flat, muddy desert, the deep sea floor is marked by giant mountain ranges and deep trenches. Although much has been learned in the last century, the deep sea remains the least explored part of our planet. This year, a team of oceanographers, geologists and marine biologists have launched a new mission to produce the most detailed maps of the UK's deep sea ever made. This mission is known as the UK Marine Environmental Mapping Programme, or MARAMAP. Well, unfortunately, you know, lots of charismatic animals like dolphins and whales, you know, are quite easily accessible for the public and even coral communities like the Great Barrier Reef, you know, the public is very aware of the danger that is posed to those um, habitats. But unfortunately, mapping the deep, you know, it's, it's venturing out into the unknown, you know, thousands of metres of water depth and the public just don't know what's down there. A lot of the scientists don't even know what's down there. And it's not until we can go out and start doing this sort of work that we can make the public aware what's just needing to be saved and protected and looked after for the future. What the public often don't realise is that a lot of these animals give us um, important um, resources, so for the medical profession, um, for biotechnology um, and even the military. A lot of these animals are giving us information and, and um, data that's actually helping mankind generally and yet at the same time, a lot of these animals are going to become extinct if we're not careful about how we protect the seabed in, in the deep ocean. So things like deep sea mining and um, other you know, aspects of man's activities, climate change, all these things are threatening these animals. And, uh, and often, you know, we don't even know what's down there yet. We haven't discovered a lot of these things. So, so I think you know, we, we could end up losing a cure for cancer before we found it. That's the, the beautiful irony of it. So, so even though these animals are down deep, we can't see them. They actually can potentially give us a lot of um, useful information. The Mapping the Deep project is just one part of the new Marine Mapping Initiative. Dr Kerry Howell and her team of marine biologists at the University of Plymouth focus specifically on the deep sea region of the UK. Well, the aim of the project is to produce the first high quality, high resolution maps of the UK's marine area. And with these maps, we can then make really important decisions about how we're going to use that area for the benefit of society. Um, the Mapping the Deep project is uh, being funded by the Oak Foundation and the BBC Wildlife uh, Trust. Um, but it's also part of the Mare Map project, which is funded by the Natural Environment Research Council, uh, a project to try and map the entire deep sea of the uh, UK. Uh, in order to map the biology uh, of the deep sea, uh, we need to head out onto a large research vessel, probably for about a month or so, um, and uh, try and gather information from the deepest parts of the ocean, which is quite a challenge in itself. Well, most people don't realise, but the deep sea is an incredibly diverse place, with lots of weird and wonderful, fantastic creatures in it. One of the most spectacular things that you'll find in the deep sea are coral reefs. Most people don't realise, but the UK has really big coral reefs. They're just in very, very deep water, so you can't go and dive on them. So here's um, what the coral looks like. It's one species, it's called Lophelia pertusa. And this species forms really big uh, reef habitat. And this is a really important habitat for lots of other species. So just like the Great Barrier Reef, 
um, you've got lots of other animals living on that reef structure. Now, it's incredibly fragile. Um, it breaks very, very easily. So if this sort of structure gets hit by something very heavy, like, for example, a bottom trawl, it gets destroyed completely. Now, some of these reef structures are 8,000 or more years old. Um, so you can imagine that, unfortunately, if something hits it once, it's gone, it's no longer a home for anything else, and it will take another several thousand years to recover. So wouldn't it be great if we knew where these things were? If we knew where they were, then we could make sure that, you know, we just don't allow activities near them, but we allow activities going on elsewhere. Um, and that's what the Mapping the Deep project is about. It's about figuring out what's where so that we can um, better protect it and make sure it's there for future generations. So this is a deep water sponge, um, it's a little fluffy looking tennis ball type thing, it's actually called the bird's nest sponge. Um, and this uh, forms a really important habitat for other species, you, you wouldn't know it to look at it would you? But it actually occurs in really dense aggregations, so there'll be thousands and thousands of these things. Um, and uh, other species live in them and on them, um, they can climb up them to get into the faster water currents to collect food, um, they're spicules, these uh, bits of fluff you can see sticking out here, when they fall off they form a mat on the bed of the sea and that actually traps food and provides a really important food source for lots of other animals. Um, so they make these incredible habitats um, and they're really easily disturbed. I mean you can, you know, you can see when it's like a bath sponge, you can squish it very easily. Um, so they're very easily disturbed. So any kind of um, disturbance on the seabed, be it from building a platform or, or doing trawling or mining activities are, are going to cause them some serious problems. Um, so it's really important that we just know where they are so we can manage our activities to make sure that we're not um, you know, wiping out really important habitats for other species. We're increasingly looking to the deep sea to provide food, energy and raw materials. But without accurate maps of deep sea environments, accidents can happen. Some of the most vulnerable habitats in the world are found in the deep sea, like cold water coral reefs and coral gardens. The UK has extensive reefs in the deep sea, but when these fragile structures come into contact with bottom trawls, the results are disastrous for both the coral habitat and the fishermen's nets. With accurate maps of the deep sea, we can manage where different activities occur so that accidents do not happen and we can use our seas in a sustainable and responsible way. The maps produced by the Mapping the Deep project will help us better manage our marine environment and ensure that the deep sea, the last great wilderness on Earth, remains a fascinating, weird and wonderful place. The deep sea, the last unexplored frontier on Earth. We're only beginning to scratch the surface. But this wilderness is in danger of being destroyed before it's even discovered.